Well, we had the game last night that we all expected between the Chargers and Raiders just as we thought it would go. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the second half of the games and the matchups this week and get you ready for the playoffs. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Well, <laughs> well, 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 yeah, well, Friday. <laughs> The fantasy footballers. That that was a reaction to the low scoring affair from last night. The uh, well, I hope you bet the over. Oh, I did, and I, <laughs> I am like, happy. Yeah. I should get bonus. Like you should get a bonus if you bet no, the over. If you double it, and you double it. No, your your bonus is retracted. Of as you immediately were like, I have made a huge mistake. I did think that. Yeah. Yeah, I bet the over. And so you, then, get, you just get your winnings. I bet the over a couple days ago when it was 34, and I didn't know that, you know, we thought Jacobs might be out, but we thought Keenan would be in. And then these players start dropping, and then we're like, ah, there's no way we'll get 84 points, right? 84. That means they beat the over by 50, right? Wow. They beat the over by 50 points. So uh, the Raiders, 63. The Chargers, 21. Uh, Jason had some good analysis on this game, uh -huh. fantasy-wise. Oh. Yeah, basically, here's at the end of the day, uh, the players that were good were Easton Stick, Aiden O'Connell, Zamir White, Jacoby Myers, Brandon Bolden. Um, Don't forget about uh, Trey Tucker. Oh, I'm halfway through. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Trey Tucker, uh, Michael Mayer, uh, Joshua Palmer, uh, Quentin Johnston, uh Everyone but Austin Eckler. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's insane. Every single player on both sides, even if you were terrible. I mean, Easton Stick couldn't have been worse. Wonderful fantasy game. Absolutely outstanding. Three now, touchdowns. Um, what Charger was most likely played last night? Oh, that's uh, that's Austin Eckler. Yeah. Yeah, the one that you played, uh, he got six carries. I He also got four receptions. The oh, I apologize, five carries. And, yeah, I mean, I guess I don't want to just be rubbing it in, but it's like you the points you got from Eckler in the second half, count your blessings on those. So like, Do you see him marking his big first down that he got in the second half when they were down 63-7? to seven? Cause like, Or 55-7 to seven or whatever after, it was? After the first half when it was 42-0, do I have that right? I, it was around there. And the fact that Eckler even saw the field, saw the field to get more opportunities is like, okay, it, that, it the fact that Eckler didn't finish with a point, I know that doesn't bring any warm fuzzy feelings that you got six or in in a I think it was about six and a half point scoring format, but I it, found it could have been it could have been way worse. I found myself very thankful that we pushed for the Raiders defense to be started. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. The, the the Raiders defense forced five Sheesh. fumbles, scored two touchdowns. Unfortunately, I I faced them in two of my six playoff leagues. Those matchups nope. feel done. Yeah, see you next year. They they're, feel over. They're not done. They're not. But it, like that is, you know, one one player any one player can have a great game and still lose. It's just really it's, 29 points. It's extra in one of the leagues when it comes from a defense. When it, when a defense or a kicker ends up with one of those crazy 25 point weeks, that's I usually a I was now. complaining about it before the second interception for a <laughs> touchdown, and then it got worse. and And then I looked at the clock, and there's 12 minutes left. So all I was waiting for was yeah, a third touchdown. But no, Jason's right. I mean, if you played somebody, look, I I said I dropped Joshua Palmer. If you got halfway through this game, you're like, thank goodness. And then a 79-yard touchdown. Broken coverage. I think it's probably the best for you that you dropped him so you don't look at that and be tempted into next week. Well, right now we have Brandon Staley still the coach. Yeah. They probably have a plan to move on from him after the season that doesn't involve firing him now. 
I feel like if you fired him now, there's more hope for some of these offensive players to be mm -hmm. playing inspired or with an interim coach like Keenan Allen returning to this dumpster fire. Like, if I'm Keenan, I'm taking another week or two off. Yeah, I'm getting to a hundo. Yeah. For sure. Also, uh, Jason, I saw you tweet it. We had the exact same thought. <laughs> the, is, the Vikings defense? How good are the Vikings? <laughs> We've been saying the Vikings defense is legit, but they just shut this team out last four days ago. Four days ago, they shut them out. They couldn't score a point. And then all of a sudden, four days later, against the Chargers, Aiden O'Connell can do no wrong. Yeah, well, Aiden O'Connell could do no wrong. He could have thrown more touchdowns. Yeah, he mean, only threw four. Jacoby Myers threw one. That was a real knife twist for me. Yeah, you are playing in our league of record. You have Devontae Adams. Congratulations. Thanks. You are playing against someone who was forced to play Jacoby Myers. Who threw the touchdown to Devontae Adams? <laughs> the worst part was someone, I was complaining that Adams hadn't scored a touchdown. Everyone else had. And someone said, oh, he finally got his. I'm like, yeah. Then I went and looked and it got thrown to by my opponent. It was a heck of a wild game. Nothing we expected. Now, Jason, I saw you did have some comments as we put a bow on this about Al Michaels. And oh, did you, did your yeah. opinion? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to bury the man, but he's my all time favorite broadcaster sure, sure. the great. the most buttery sultry voice he's great. some of the he's most famous great. calls a great sense of humor willingness to point out things that are um you know that yeah that more bravado to come yeah. out and say something's wrong hey, i mean that dude is asleep at the wheel <laughs> like just let's sunset let's let's uh move forward because it's just like it's so boring and and there was an enough opportunity in this game for excitement it's just such oh. a boring call yeah. now fantasy people that was a fun game. Um, and uh, the, the last bit of advice I'll give here is just take a peek at your waiver wire. Perhaps the Buffalo Bills or the Denver Broncos are on your waiver wire, and mm, they that, will be playing the Chargers in the upcoming weeks. Yeah. Yeah, that was a Cause that catastrophe. Team, I, I have to imagine that the team will bounce back in some way after this performance, but that team quit. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it certainly seemed like a team that was not uh, – they don't get an A for effort. <laughs> no. All right, it's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday we give $100 away, a $100 gift card to FantasyChamps.com to a supporter of our show, a member of the Foot Clan from JoinTheFoot.com. Today's winner – Nick Lakata, Nick, congratulations. You have won. Use your winnings wisely. Go yeah. and purchase a ring or a trophy and flaunt it. Tis the season. Yes. Into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right, let's try to get through this pretty quick. We've got a lot of matchups to get to. Alexander Madison ruled out. Okay. Justin uh, Jefferson officially questionable, expected to play. DJ Moore returned to Bears practice. He's good. Tyreek Hill, Devon Achan. Red alert here. I'd Especially be, on the Achan side. Yeah, I'd be more concerned about Achan. Neither of them practiced on Thursday. I believe Tyreek Hill is very, very committed to 2,000 yards. So I think that that will, if, if you know, in the team's interest, can they beat the Jets without those two guys? 100%. So when you talk about matchups, like there are certain matchups you you they face, can, they can also lose to them. I, I but I, they, I mean, they made this decision with Achan two weeks ago. They sat Achan down. He was questionable going into the week. They were playing the Jets and they didn't play him. Uh, I think they view Achan as a player they need in the stretch run. Their offense is significantly better when they have Achan, despite how great Raheem Mostert has been. Uh, Achan provides something really important for them, and they could beat the Jets without him. But they can also lose to the Tennessee Titans mm -hmm. last week with him and their stretch run coming forward if you're unaware the Dolphins they play the Jets this week I I know it's an eight and a half point spread I said yesterday on the matchup preview I that would be my almost upset I could see the 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 Jets making that a competitive game then Dallas then Baltimore then Buffalo that's it's how the season geez. finishes that's exactly why you shouldn't play HN if you're them because of those games rest. maybe yeah, yeah. So he didn't practice again. So this is not it was not a rest day for Devon Achan. Uh their head coach came out and said for both players, they're unknowns as to whether they'll be available. And uh we will monitor it closely. We have the 
Injury Blitz podcast. I would if which I'm, comes this afternoon on jointhefoot.com. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, will have the latest news. If I'm an A-chan manager, I am picking up Jeff Wilson because I think Jeff Wilson will be a, an okay play as uh you know, he'll he'll be the forty percent of a timeshare against the Jets bad run defense. Okay. Uh CJ Stroud didn't practice. Nico Collins didn't practice. Chris Godwin didn't practice. I don't think Godwin is looking very good for this week, and he probably wasn't in your lineup anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Stroud and Nico not practicing on Thursday, that's not great. Yeah, for, for Stroud, if you're not progressing getting through. Getting at least limited. Yeah, if you, if when, when you don't see the progression through the concussion protocol, then you could be pretty confident you are not clearing it. So I, as of right now, I see, as, I see Stroud as, as out because he's not progressed at all. A.J. Dillon, broken thumb, did not practice on Thursday. Aaron Jones remained limited. Christian Watson didn't practice. Quick thoughts on those three who will be out there uh i mean Jaden reed and romeo dobbs seem like good plays this week it's a it's a pretty nice matchup for both players and the passing game i I talked about yesterday i like jordan love and if they don't have these other weapons that consolidation of where the ball's going to go is valuable for fantasy brian robinson remained sideline on thursday okay we did the research into the comments the comments were all from ron rivera saying we expect him back at practice it was interpreted by another source as expecting him back for the week. It was all about practice. Haven't seen him at practice. Definitely in jeopardy of uh, not playing. Yeah, the, the matchup's not great, but Gibson will. And Rodriguez. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, but if the if they're both there, you're picking up Gibson, right? Sure. Okay. Isaiah Pacheco didn't practice again on Thursday. That seems like an unlikely start. Yeah. Chris Olave did not practice again on Thursday due to the ankle. Rashid Shahid was limited, could get him back this week. Hollywood Brown returned to a limited practice on Thursday. That's okay. Goodness. And, and the Deucers are going to let us know if they hear anything updated, especially from the East Coast practices yeah. as we record the rest of the show. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Yesterday, we covered the Vikings, Bengals, Steelers, Colts, Broncos, Lions, Bears, Browns, Buccaneers, Packers, Titans, Texans, Jets, and Dolphins. So if you want to hear the breakdowns of those games, just click on yesterday's episode. Which you should have already listened to. Ooh. Yeah, we really prefer you listen in order. Was that a yeah. scolding, Mike? No, nope. That was mm. just a... It's educational, too. Yeah. yeah. It was just a, a stern warning. <laughs> Watch yourself. Be careful yeah. what you click on. Never miss an episode, ever, or, or I will find you. Yeah, Mike does spend yeah. most of his weekends. He holds on to his revenge really well. <laughs> there, Mike. Mike is a grudge holder. Yes, he is. Yeah, Mike. Mike. Uh, I'm working on it. We thought, I'm getting even better. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the only working on it you're doing is you are now impressing me even more. Like, I don't know. We're like two weeks or three weeks removed from the trade deadline when you didn't get any compensation from Michael Pittman, uh-huh. you're still tracking what team's performance that turned you down would have been if they had traded for Michael Pittman. I may or may not have DM'd your opponent <laughs> earlier this week saying, oh, man, Michael Pittman, wide receiver 11, sure look good on your team right now. You did? You're darn right I did. You oh, sent me goodness. your analysis. I didn't know you had DM'd him directly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I <laughs> Dude, you should set up a website like regrets.com. All the what could have been. That's that's funny. That means Jason's still going to hear about it. All right. Oh no, he's yeah, he's already paid the ultimate price. He just he would have been in the playoffs. I would have. That's that's the <laughs> worst part. Is it is not like oh maybe no I would have. The Kansas. City- I have Josh Downs. I can't Ooh. possibly trade for Michael Pittman. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jason had, wants to punch you. I, no, I unplugged his laptop. Oh man, you're yeah now hour and a half a couple now, hours. My your battery will be dimmed. gone. <laughs> All right, let's start here. The Kansas City Chiefs eight and five take on the three and ten New England Patriots. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Kansas City minus eight. The over under is thirty seven. This is by far the lo- the lowest over under in the Patrick Mahomes era. Uh, it's not been good for fantasy purposes for Patrick Mahomes. Here's what I will say. They're facing New England, who's been a very good defense. They're coming off a game that was an embarrassing loss and all the emotions. Reed is pretty good after a loss. But I feel backed into Mahomes in a certain league. Like, I, 
missed out on Stafford, which sounds crazy to say, but I missed out on picking up Stafford to play over Mahomes. And this literally this morning, I'm going, Jason, I need upside. Is it Mahomes? Is it Russell Wilson? Like, these are real questions. And we decided Mahomes over Russ. Russ doesn't really have the upside. But when you are having that level of question, yeah, question about Patrick Mahomes for the first time ever, and, and it's completely legitimate. Um, you know, this is a matchup where, first of all, he hasn't had a ton of big blow up games. His floor is much lower. His receiving core has not gotten it done other than Rushy Rice. Travis Kelsey's lost a step, and it's a bad matchup with a low over under. So, um, I, I think there are other options. You know, like if I, if you, you faced the Raiders defense, so you were like, I need a big explosive option. That's where it's like, you could make a pretty compelling argument for like Sam Howell over uh, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, and that, that's a tough thing. And, Mike, maybe you have some thoughts. But, like, if you got Raiders last night, right? try to have a measured response to that. Because if you pivot every quality player for a high ceiling chance, low floor chance, you could undermine your comeback as well. So you have to find the balance, right? You don't want to just try to throw in a bunch of dart throws to survive. Like, you, you can chunk that back, like – Obviously, a couple players on your opponent that aren't the Raiders can have dud games and you're right back into it. It just feels bad right now. So don't overreact. In the last seven weeks, how many times has Patrick Mahomes hit the very low bar of 20 fantasy points? Well, there's not going to be good. 20. Uh, just 20. And then how many weeks? The last seven weeks. I'm going to say two. I'll go one. Mike is right. Andy, you doubled it. One time has he hit 20 points in the last seven weeks. In in uh, It's very easy to see. Four how, point I mean, passing. You're not going to have Pacheco. So you're not moving the ball on the ground as well. You you have one true, reliable receiver in Travis Kelsey who will be just, I mean, the Patriots are going to focus on. So now you're just telling Patrick Mahomes, go have success with Tony and Watson and MBS and Rashi Rice and score enough fantasy points with those guys. Like, you can make a play. You can score a touchdown. But it's really hard to pile up three or four if you don't hit the big play. Like, Patrick Mahomes' history is hitting the big play. And uh, that's just not been there. So do I think they win the game? Yeah. Do I think you get huge fantasy production? I wouldn't count on it. Um, McKinnon, Clyde, both will split the opportunities, and you're hoping you end up with the touchdown. It'll probably yeah. be one on the ground between the two. Good luck making the choice. I mean, McKinnon has got the – if you're in a PPR league, that's got to be your pick. And he also seems to be the preferred back when they get inside the five or so. And it wasn't just this week. I mean, we had seen that. Uh, when the season opened as as well. So I lean McKinnon over. If I'm picking between the two, I lean McKinnon slightly, but not not like a fist pump of confidence. And R Rashi Rice is in the yes. start category for yes. sure. On the other side, Demario Douglas, out of the concussion protocol, should play. Devontae Parker is limited. He missed last week. Juju I, had the big game. Do you care? Matter. No, I don't care about Demario Douglas. <laughs> Do you care about Hunter Henry at all? I don't care about Hunter Henry. Um, you want nobody. I want no. That's not true. I want Ezekiel Elliott. Okay. I think Ezekiel Elliott's a good play. Um, over the course of the season, the Chiefs haven't been stout at stopping the run. Their passing defense is better than their rushing defense. Zeke is going to probably get at least five targets and fifteen carries. If you're telling me a player gets twenty opportunities, they're in my lineup. Okay. Anything else from this game you guys want to discuss? No, I think that's it. All right. The New York Giants. Tommy DeVito, five and eight. Take on the six and seven New Orleans Saints division leading, right? Are they? No, no. I believe it's, the it's Tampa. The Bucks are. Up. Oh, that's they're right. tied. Same record, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Um, DraftKings Sportsbook line: New Orleans minus five at home. Over under is thirty nine. It's a good DST to play. I'm seeing I a picture of Jason Moore from the show where he had to wear. Oh my god! He had to wear week. the fedora from Fedora Week, and he looked very much like Tommy DeVito's agent. He does. Yeah. So how encouraged were you by the offensive performance by the Giants and how you know, how are you viewing their starting options this week? I think there's a lot of optimism around the Giants that is probably unfounded. Um I know that the Giants fans aren't going to want to hear that. You've won 3 games in a row. You've got Danny DeVito at quarterback who's won those games. But those games were against the New England Patriots who have they're one of only two teams eliminated from the playoffs already against the Washington Manders after they got rid of their defensive line. Last week was a that's surprising a, a good, win. good win against the Packers. So 
It, it, that, but that was coming off of a bye while the Packers are traveling across the country. I just don't believe that this roster is very talented, and I think that the New Orleans Saints in the Superdome have a very good defense. So I am not expecting um, a fourth win here for the Giants, and I'm not expecting huge fantasy production. You can't start a single. There's no wide receiver you could reliably choose with confidence to start on the Giants. Wanda if I had, had to dart throw it, it would be Wanda. Yeah, because he had PPR. targets last week. Yeah, But it's like, you know. But it, it was high at the week before. Right, exactly. You it's, just it, play Saquon, right? And you just close your eyes and hope it works that's out? That's it for the Giants. I mean, you, you pay attention to Waller if he's active, but I still don't start him. You don't? Do you? I don't think so. If I'm in the playoffs, I imagine I've got a – I've seen questions coming through. I mean, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but the Saints the last six weeks, 32nd against fantasy tight ends. Well, I, I guess – I mean, look, I would play Isaiah Likely over him, and I think that's the okay. bar, right? Because everybody above Isaiah Likely in my – Dalton Kincaid was the question I got. Dalton Kincaid, Ooh, or, the uh, or 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 the Waller is. I would play Dalton Kincaid. I went with the higher over under in Kincaid on my answer as well. That's, that's this is a low do. over under. This is the, one of the most inefficient offenses in football on the other side in New Orleans. So you have two inefficient offenses with a thirty nine point over under. The Giants' defense can have big performances, and I I don't have any trust. I mean, if Alave is out, you're talking about Derek Carr trying to move this offense. You obviously play Kamara. I mean, that is, that's a lock, but like Taysom Hill's supposed to be back. It'd be a nerve wracking start. If Olave was out and Rashid Shahid was back, should he be spot started? I think it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a prayer, but it makes sense. He likes Shahid. I'm he telling does. you, he really does. I, I he just, likes him. Did you see all the, the, the gifts? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Santa Claus, Derek Carr came through. Derek Carr gave gifts away to everybody, it's offensive nice. linemen, wide receivers. But the funniest part was he gave, I think, Rolexes mm -hmm. to two wide receivers. Yeah. Oh, really? And yeah. it was Olave and Shahid, and then the rest Kid all got – bodied Michael Thomas. The, yeah, Michael Thomas. Oh, he said he's – You yeah, think Derek Carr didn't see the social media uh, stuff? He knows. I would have gave him a lump of coal. Yeah, so he's like – you know, giving him what's what's his injury like an ankle brace or something? <laughs> Here's a nice one. Go <laughs> rest one those, up. One of those fancy copper lined ones. Oh yeah, so, it's gonna heal you. <laughs> so we're we're okay. If Olave's active, you're putting him in. Yeah. yeah. And then Kamara, and then Taysom Hill is just really risky. I'd play Isaiah Likely over him. Yeah, I mean, you Taysom Hill is more where you could argue Darren Waller or Taysom. Yeah, Taysom I, would, Hill. I would play. I'd try Waller because I'd be looking for a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. All right, quick break. Back with some more matchups. Brooksy, did you have anybody in last night's? Uh... Yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah. It, so in the matchup last night, Mike versus Brooks. Mm -hmm. I just want to know who had what. Oh, Adams. Yeah. He yeah. had Adams. And you, and you had nothing. Correct. I had. It was. Which means you have nothing points wise, and he's got twenty. Yeah, he had Adams, but. The Lee, the the team of destiny. Oh yeah, had Devontae Adams chip, versus chip, chip. Austin Eckler. Woo! So man, that's such a shame now, for uh, our for, opponent. For a team yeah. of destiny, let me just say one thing: you've won three championships in this league in a, that in I'm a, in, in a row. row yeah, that I obviously, you know, I'm obviously not in that league, so that makes sense. You keep um, trying to get in. Yeah, you've you've been trying. <clears throat> I've been trying to be the co-manager of whoever's got the best team <laughs> to try to beat you. Um, but let me just say this: for a team of destiny. With such, like, you've been there. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the perfect example of, like, you have won championships. Mm -hmm. You're three, very three surprised by the outcomes weekly. Like, you, for a team of Destiny, you're uh, like, honestly, oh, you're like, very surprised well, that it happened. Destiny ask, surprises me yeah, all Yeah, that's what the I was going to ask. When have you been on the road of Destiny and had it not surprised you? How well, untraceable just, just like, the paths. You know, it's like, stay I, humble, I, don't, man. I don't know. the. Thank you, Mike. We are humble. We are if very anything, humble. Humble, humble, humble. Yeah. 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 Humble, humble, humble. Yeah. Humble champ, humble champ, humble champ in a row. You know, so. Uh, if destiny knows you're getting too high on your horse, it'll knock you down. Yeah. We stay low. I just feel like the definition of destiny is you know what's going to happen. No. Destiny is just. Right, Brooks? Destiny is just means. Check I mean, it out. Well, what is going to happen is going to happen. I mean, yeah, happen. we know what's going to happen. We just don't know how it's exactly. going to happen. Oh, so you get surprised by the how. Yeah. I'm surprised on the way. I it's, can't wait to find out how. Right. It's the adventures along the way. I know we're going to slay the dragon. Right, but like... But who's going to do it? How? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. what weapon will you use? Yeah. Honestly, I... Can't. And the weapon is often... Oh, it's a nasty boy. Nasty boy. Yeah, it's just sometimes it's a roundhouse kick. Who was the uh, the Washington... 
uh, Manda running back that got oh, you a title? Yeah. Oh, Jarrett Patterson. Yeah, he was ah. in our championship week lineup, baby. Along with, I believe we've done it with Justin Watson. Hassan Haskins. Superstar. We, How's I this? Mean, Kyle's in the building today. Oh, I, yeah. Hey, I feel hey, like Kyle. I neglected to announce this. Kyle, what's going on? I hate their team so much. I hate <laughs> now, you're it. in that league. Yeah, Kyle, are you going to knock That explains us? a lot. Are you going to knock us out of the playoffs? I won't be knocking him out this yeah. year. Oh, Is he man. not even in? Wait. Is he not what? in? What? Did you miss the playoffs? Kyle. Last week, I got kicked in the yeah. pants. Mm. Yeah, he got from division leader to out the playoffs. In one week? Yeah. <laughs> and was. did you face Zemir White last night in one of your other leagues? I, I'm getting destroyed, people. I'm just getting <laughs> annihilated. Fantasy he he, hey, he told me he was in a league where the only way he could lose the bye week was to lose his final four games. <laughs> what happened, Kyle? I've lost four in a row. Nice. Yeah. That's hey, the, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for visiting, Kyle. Um, <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> You're not, you're not going to like what happens on the pickleball court either. Uh, Atlanta <laughs> at Carolina, the 6-7 and seven Falcons against the 1-12 and 12 Panthers. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Atlanta minus three. The over-unders, 33 and a half. Ooh, that's, that's not good. Hey, that's, that's not hey, good wait, at all. Guys, last night, just remember what happened. Yeah, the 84 points on the way. Uh, Desmond Ritter, Bryce Young, Ritter last week, balled out. I'll go no and no. He he's done that before. Yeah, that's a no and no. Bijan Robinson, of course, get him yes. in there. He could be a league winner. What do you do at the running back position on the other side? Uh, it it it's definitely Chuba. I mean, the last three weeks, the opportunities are awesome. Uh, the problem is the matchup is not very good. the The Falcons have been shutting down the run recently. I think this is a volume play that you could put in your lineup. It's more of like a Running back three flex option. People are wanting to know Chuba Hubbard or Ty Chandler. Oh, I would definitely Chandler. go Ty Chandler. Okay. Miles well, Sanders was 10 for 74 last week. It he was had one, one giant run. run. Hey, man, that's one more than he had all uh, year. I get it. <laughs> Drake London had a huge week last week. The matchup is not good because, well, the Panthers, they give it up on the ground. It could be a Bijan game. One of the challenges with the Falcons is how do you react to the occasional good game by their pass catchers? Because they slow the game down, they run it down your throat. They're going to play good defense against Bryce Young. I find it risky. Yeah, me too. But I also find it hard not to just play him. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are there are certainly options. You know, your your opponent had Jacoby Myers in his lineup last week. I'd play Drake London over Jacoby Myers. Uh, results might not go. To th you know, <laughs> you would have. I I would have. What about uh? Let's go Rasheed Rice. I, guess I would play Rasheed Rice. Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed. Okay, and then we'll go with, the I guess, a harder one. We'll go Calvin Ridley against the Baltimore Ravens. I think that's where I would go Drake London. Okay. Do you feel like Drake London has a back-to-back -back performance in store, Mike? i guessing when Drake London's going to have his big games is is nearly impossible. He's, but you he's, know who, he's great. He's a great player. I wanted to see what his price was in DraftKings. He's directly priced next to Gabe Davis and. Yeah, couldn't be a more perfect <laughs> tandem inside of the. Hey, uh, Drake London doesn't do zeros. No, no, that's true. Was, he had one point three points two weeks ago. Yeah, that ain't no goose. He did have a zero in week one. I forgot. <laughs> oh yeah, he started the season. <laughs> Drake London does do zeros. <laughs> they, he zero. Last week wasn't as bad for Adam Thielen as it has been. In fact, last week he was five for seventy four. Um, is he the one you'd play? Between him and Mingo? Between him and Mingo, if you had to start a wide receiver? Mingo is getting the targets. I, I would start Adam Thielen over Mingo. Obviously, the targets in the future are Mingo, not Thielen. But Mingo has yet to prove he can do anything with the targets. He's not been good on uh, on a he was full season basis. He was wide open for a touchdown last week. And, and part of him not being good is his quarterback is not good. Yeah, Adam Thielen is usually a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage where Bryce Young can hit him. Is, so, is uh, Adam, but I don't want to play either. Is Thielen a like a you? I've, I'm just going to play him no matter what. Or am no, I looking at your no. options. Thielen is what about not Dobbs? locked in. What about Romeo Dobbs? Romeo Dobbs? I would play Dobbs or Reed over I would play Adam him. Thielen. Yeah, I would too. Kyle Pitts had the most snaps of the year last year, or sorry, of the year last week. He scored. I don't want to play him. I don't. I don't blame you. The passing game here is not one that you want. I know that they had a good. Pitts had a good game. London had a good game, but against the Carolina Panthers, this super is a, low over. This under. is a team where you run the ball on them. Your your every team that faces them just ends up by the end of the game running. 
and not throwing much. So that includes Kyle Pitts. That includes Drake London. Bijan is a smash start. Yes, should be great. But the the pass catching options, you got to just look at your lineup and probably pivot to others. That'll be it for this matchup. Thirty four point over under thirty three and a half. Not a, not an exciting one. Breaking news. Just an update for you. Tyreek Hill did not practice again today. So he has missed practice all three games this week. He's 458 think, yards away from 2,000. Do you think he plays? He's listed as questionable, so not listed as doubtful. I imagine he'll suit up. I'm, I'm about 60-40 on him playing still because he plays through injury. He's 458 yards away from 2,000. Here, here's the problem, though. If, you're, if the backbone of your team is Tyreek Hill, it could be a tough week. Him playing does not guarantee that Tyreek Hill has a humongous week against the Jets. The Jets are the best team against opposing wide receivers. And he could leave injured if his ankle bothered him again. So I think he suits up, but you better have a plan is what I'm saying. You better be ready with somebody else if he doesn't go because we – What about Tua? Tua, I'm not starting. Just like, bail out? Tua is straight up a bench for me. Uh, there, there are, he was before you even thought A-chan or – that's right. I mean, Tua didn't score 10 fantasy points against the Jets a little while ago. The Jets don't give up a lot to quarterbacks. If you look at Tua's game log, yeah, he's got a lot of really big, awesome performances. But he has just as many really bad, awful performances, even in games where they win, but the touchdowns come on the ground. I think Tyreek will play, and I don't think A-Chan will. That's my current That opinion. is where I stand as well. We'll see if um, A-Chan practices today. And like I said, if you haven't – done it before if you go to jointhefoot.com and you're a supporter of the show um you get access to the injury blitz so matthew best is going to have all that analysis our injury expert um so go check that out washington four and nine ram six and seven DraftKings sportsbook line los angeles minus six and a half the over under is 50 here's a game we yeah. like rams offense 31 36 37 points the last three weeks even against good defenses like Baltimore last week, the commander's defense is collapsing. They've fallen apart. After, I mean, purposely. they traded. Collapsed. Uh. Yeah, yeah. The, yes, thank you. Like the building is, is yeah. down. Yeah, you can just walk right where it used to be. Um, <laughs> the, the, the Rams, there's no piece that you don't want. Correct. I mean, Kyron is obviously in. You, Andy, you said you think he's going to be the running back one on the week. You forgot Christian McCaffrey plays Arizona, but I understand what you're saying. Uh, Cooper <laughs> Cup is in. Puka is absolutely yeah. in. Stafford, I'd start over anyone that isn't just clear and obvious that got you to the playoffs because they are one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Lamar. Wow. I'll I think play I would, Stafford. I think I would well, rather play Stafford. play Stafford. Lamar. I'm not living the one week. Lamar, well, it's, I'm it, not doing the Gabe Davis thing you were talking about, where I only look at the film from last week. I'm going three year window for or three week window. Yeah, for and, Lamar. and when um, when I was bringing up Tua and how he's had amazing performances, but really bad performances, even in victories, that's Lamar came to mind. Lamar has the ability to score 45, but Lamar has the ability to score 12.5 because they just rush touchdowns in. Got one more for you, Brock Purdy. I'll play Purdy. Yeah, Purdy against the Cardinals. He's been on fire. Right now he's my quarterback three, so okay. I'm going to have him ahead. Yeah, Kyron, Stafford, Cooper, Puka, and then well, let's not mess around with tight ends there. Uh, Higby could be back. He could be sharing time. And just if you are desperate, Tutu Atwell did not practice, or he was limited, so you have to pay attention to it. But Demarcus Robinson is the prime benefactor if Tutu misses. He had 10 targets last week. It's not a absolute must play. But you could be in a situation where you're looking for somebody and there's going to be points in this game. Yeah, I also think on the other side of the ball, it is dicey. You are not going to have a clear and easy time playing Terry McLaurin or Jahan Dotson. But in the game makeup like this, where you know Sam Howell's probably going to throw the ball 45 times, and yes, they could all go to uh, Curtis Samuel and Logan Thomas and just not what you want. But we're taking dart throws around the league. This is the game environment. I would still be willing to take a dart throw on Terry McLaurin. He's yeah, not I someone agree. that, like, I'm not going, like, oh, you have to start him. But you're looking at who could have a big game. Terry could absolutely, in this game, have a big game. I'd play Samuel over him, though. 
if, I think Samuel has a much higher floor, more reliable targets than, than Terry. I don't think McLaurin's got a ceiling either. I mean, he hasn't had one all year long. Yeah, I still think he does just based on talent and career and game environment. Yeah, it's been bad. It's it, been bad. It I'm has. not I'm not playing Terry McLaurin. The Rams are playing for everything. They're at home. They're heavily favored. Uh, I'm I'm personally not. I understand. Uh, McLaurin has a pedigree and a resume that, that puts him on the table, so he could have a big game, no question. Um, it's possible. Certain players it's not possible for. So, um, Mike, you mentioned Logan Thomas is your start of the week mm -hmm. because of opportunity. I'm nervous about 100% of the commanders. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Even I'm, if the game's got it. a high over or under, I think at I'm any, not, any moment any of those players could ruin your week. I'm not nervous about Sam Howell. Sam Howell, to me, is pretty much a locked-in starter. He is, even in games where he's been bad, he's not always great. But for fantasy purposes? I don't know, man. Well, I, I mean, don't know. He's not. I mean, you make the same argument with Patrick Mahomes with him. He hasn't been over 20 points one time in the last five weeks. So it, he he's not going to completely destroy you. But, you know, he's got a floor, too. I, I don't want to play him. The last six weeks... He has not finished lower than the quarterback 10. He's been a top 10 quarterback yeah, for a month enough. and a half. That's not good enough. Okie dokie. <laughs> I mean, I that that's that's fine. I am fine starting Sam Howell. I think that uh, he's just going to throw too much to uh, to completely fail, to, to be someone that goes out there and has 12 fantasy points and ruins you. Joe Flacco, Sam Howell, Mike. I'd go Howell. All right. Um, and then we... It's a slight update, not definitive, but Robinson not spotted at the media portion of practice. That does, as we've learned, that does not mean they have, will not practice. But Gibson is Gibson's a dart throw running back. Gibson's been a top twenty-four running back three of the last four games. The complicated part with injuries, you know, dealing with Tyreek and Achan and those guys, is you got three Saturday games. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you don't get the luxury of. I mean, they're the morning game. The, the on Sunday, but you don't get the luxury of like knowing more information. That, as far as we know, both guys are going to be questionable, A Chan and, and Tyreek. And then you have three decisions to make on Saturday. So, I mean, you're probably holding out for the upside of those two guys, but it's a tough matchup, too. So, that that's a hard part of this week. The, uh, the, the latest update we have here is from uh, Barry Jackson on Twitter said McDaniel said Deshaun Elliott is in protocol and is out. Rob Hunt is out. Uh, everyone else will practice except Tyreek. So it's not spelled out exactly that A-chan's practicing, but it is implied. That'd be great. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll find out more. 49ers are 10-3. and three. They take on the 3-10 and 10 Cardinals in Arizona. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, San Francisco, minus 12. The over-under is 48. San Francisco, you just play everybody. Yeah, that is correct, and um, and I do mean that. I mean everybody. Arizona's yeah. defense is dead last in completion percentage allowed. It should be a carve up fest for for Brock Purdy. You cannot, you just can't stop the weapons with this Cardinal personnel group. Yeah, and even like George Kittle, the matchup looks kind of poor against the Cardinals, but he's able to do things that others aren't. You, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, and Christian McCaffrey and Brock Purdy, they're all in every single lineup that has them on the roster. Now let's talk Cardinals. Yeah, I have a tough time with the Cardinals this week because, you know, it's a brutal matchup. They do play better at home. You have a tough call, I think, with James Conner because what we have seen, you know, we had a good revenge game against Pittsburgh. They were up the whole game. Mm -hmm. He ran the ball. He scored touchdowns. The opportunities are what I'm worried about. If this game gets out of hand really quickly, do we get the uh, you know six total opportunities that we got from James Conner a couple weeks ago? Like right. the platforms are projecting Conner for a bunch of points, and I'm just nervous about where we're headed. Like it, it's hard to sit down a running back that put two touchdowns and 25 fantasy points up a week ago to finish as the RB five or before the buy, you know, 100 yards on the ground. But I'm I, I'm having a hard time. Like I'm right now, I have Amari Cooper in my lineup over James Conner. Uh, I, I have Chandler or that's a really James good Conner. question because you Andy Chandler <laughs> Chandler could still be there. I find myself wanting to say 
Ty Chandler. I'd go Chandler. I have uh, in in the Megalo Bowl where um, my lineup this week. Currently, I have Najee Harris in over James Conner. James Conner's on my bench. He will only go in if Devon A. Chan does not play. So I I I, just, e I echo what you see in a game that you look like you're going to be losing and losing big and probably losing quickly. That does not project to be where you want to start James Conner. Yeah, you can start James Conner. Yeah, it, it's just a hard one because like I don't know. Last week the the C Seattle kind of made a game of it for the first half of the game, mm -hmm. and you know Kyler. Uh, we don't know if he all of Hollywood. He does have Trey McBride. Probably has Michael Wilson back. James Conner, you know, can get the ball. Like they could, they could definitely put up 14 points. You know, 17 points in this game, and those guys could be the ones that contribute. It's just, I mean, they're they're projected their their team implied total uh, from DraftKings Sportsbook is 18 points. So there there should be some value to be had here on the Cardinals side. A real they, Easton Stick situation. <laughs> yeah, as they as they play catch up. <laughs> Kyler is one of those guys that I just don't want to go too extreme. Is what I'm saying. I'm worried about like we know how the outcome is going to be, so we just bench everybody on Arizona. No, and... I I don't want. I don't think you have to bench everybody. I don't have the gumption to start Hollywood Brown because of his injury and his stretch run of being bad. I'm going to keep my eyes on him. I don't think there's a pass catcher I can reliably start outside of Trey McBride. James Conner is just on that bubble of well, who do you have? You can start him and you can bench him. And Kyler is. Probably James in. Connor and Devin Singletary. I would go Connor there. Okay. Hmm. Asking for a friend. <laughs> no way you play Hollywood even if he's active. I don't think so. Trey McBride, you do play because yep. he's going to get everything. Dallas is ten and three. They take on the seven and six Buffalo Bills. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Buffalo minus two at home. I asked you both that line early in the week. Both of you expected the Cowboys to be favored. Yeah, uh, that is surprise. The Cowboys have been obviously on a roll. The Bills have looked at times very, very dysfunctional. Their defense is not what it was to start the year due to injuries. Their offense has been struggling. I know they just beat the Kansas City Chiefs. That's great. Uh, they are at home. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not like blown away, but my expectation was that these Cowboys who are – the hottest team in the – I mean, the Cowboys and the Niners, those two teams just seem like destined to play each other in some really important playoff game. Um, they, they're they on fire. And so I, I would have expected the Cowboys to be favored. Is this forecast news? Uh, Is this a bad weather game? Well, the, right the now East, we're the, seeing – There's uh, a – I've heard there's a big storm yeah, for the they're East saying Coast that this weekend. There could be a 31-mile-an-hour wind gusts with a chance of rain at 80% and a high near 50. I, I, When I saw the schedule for Dak Prescott the rest of the year and, and Buffalo was on it, I'm happy with that, per, you know, for a chance of a big game. The over-under is 50 and a half, so well, let's leave it yeah, there. That That's a good sign. What I'm seeing from Roto Grinders right now is 10 to 15-mile-an-hour winds, but dry with mild temps, uh, no major impact. Yeah, That's well, I, I read a. This is the forecast from the National Weather Service two hours ago. Um, so we'll we'll have to pay attention to any evolving weather. It's not going to really. I mean, I guess your core players are your core players. Dak, CD, they're in. Allen Diggs, they're in. Pollard, James Cook, they're in. Gabe Davis, I'd rather be dead. Like literally, I'd rather you put me down <laughs> than put him in my lineup. You know what that means? That's perfect, right? Yep. Dallas plus the wind. That's a Gabe Davis game. No, I'm not doing it. Are you guys doing that in any circumstance whatsoever? No. Okay. No. I mean, Jake Ferguson. Last week, a little disappointing. Dalton Kincaid dealing with an injury. Dawson Knox is back. Are you trying to actively find an option other than Dalton Kincaid? Because it's a high over-under. They're going to need to throw the football. I'm not actively trying to. Uh, the, the Cowboys' defense is very good, but on the course of the season, when you adjust for schedule, the, the tight end, they've given up a lot of – uh, points to their 26th against tight end. It's not a scary matchup. Uh, the fact that Dawson Knox came back and Dalton Kincaid was still as involved as he was, he's a talented player. You know, are there other guys I would start over him that you could have on your, on your roster? Sure. Like, uh, I think right now you'd probably want to stay in the flames with Najoku, but I, I'm not actively looking like, Oh, should I, I'm so worried about Kincaid. Should You're not I going to Pat Fryermuth. Not going on. Right, Kate Auden. Like I still think Kincaid is a is a fine play. He's not the best play, but he's he's okay. The Ravens at ten and three take on the eight and five Jacksonville Jaguars. 
DraftKings Sportsbook line, Baltimore minus three. The over-under is 42 and a half. Baltimore in control of the number one seed in the AFC. Big blow-up game for Lamar last week. You know, Gus Edwards, Keaton Mitchell, a running back. That feels like a tough decision for fantasy players right now. So let's start there. Gus only played 28% of snaps. Baltimore's favored here. They are traveling on the road. We know Gus has benefited from these games where he ends up directly adjacent to the goal line. That hasn't happened in a little while. He had a four-week stretch where he scored eight touchdowns. The last two weeks, nothing. No touchdowns, low snap counts, four fantasy points, one fantasy point. It's like an all-or-nothing situation. Yeah, it it is. If I have to pick between the two of them, I will take Keaton Mitchell. It's not to say Gus Edwards is a full bench, desperate times, but it's, it is really you're hoping – Someone gets dragged down at the five or there's a PI in the end zone. Yeah. That, that's your path through. And then you're hoping that the read option goes to, <laughs> goes Gus, your goes to Gus Edwards. So it, there's a lot of hope, but the upside is a multi-touchdown game on like five touches. Zay Flowers, three games without Mark Andrews, yeah. done exactly what he did without Mark Andrews at the beginning of the year. Nine, uh, Nine receptions, five receptions, six receptions, wide receiver 20, wide receiver three, wide receiver six. He likes to save it for the end of the game. Yeah, I was going to say this last week. Yeah, he was, was goosing. He was not good for the majority of the game. At that point, he had, you know, five receptions for nothing. But then there was a big third and long at the end of the game where he got a, a good-sized touchdown pass, and all of a sudden his fantasy output was great. The targets were there, but um, it, it, it I don't just – see the three game sample size without Mark Andrews as a guarantee. Like I would rather start Odell Beckham over Zay Flowers personally. Wow, I am okay. definitely on the uh on the Zay Flowers side. My, I I think I'm on the Flowers side, but Beckham is a very good play. Beckham um uh, the only thing that's that's a little bit worth noting to me cuz I I you know, he sat on our waiver wire. Mm -hmm. Like he nobody nobody signed him until the I mean it was like the last guy for no fab. The, the problem with Beckham is that you are extraordinarily dependent on a big play. He doesn't play a lot of snaps. You know, even last week when he had a good game, 53% of snaps. The week before, 32%. You know, you talked about his performances off the injury report. That didn't translate to more snaps. And his, his reception high on the year is five. And he hasn't done that since week nine. So to me, I feel more nervous about Beckham than I do Flowers, and that's why I go Flowers, but... Flowers' floor is definitely higher. The The targets are near the line of scrimmage, a lot of screen, a lot of manufactured touches that aren't coming for Odell Beckham. But Odell Beckham actually looked good for the first time in a while last week coming off the bye, um, physically looked good, and his targets are more valuable. You're right. That means that there's a lower floor. If he doesn't connect on some of those big plays, then you're kind of out of luck. But the Jacksonville Jaguars secondary, I feel like that you know they've been really, really susceptible. Um, they're 29th against wide receivers. They do give up big plays, and that's where I see, like, if there's a big play here... It's going Beckham's way in your I mind? I think it's going Beckham's way. All right, but and a, then... But both are good plays. Like, I like both players. Isaiah Likely? Yep. Put him in there? I think so. Yep, I agree. ETN is in. Evan Ingram's been on fire. You play him tight end for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Get him in your lineup. But I'm not messing with... I Like, the Trevor Lawrence decision for people is is brutal this week. I don't want to start Trevor Lawrence. You'd start how? I would start how? Kyler? I would start Kyler. Um, we still don't know. Easton Stick? In, a, <laughs> in, in hindsight, time yeah. uh, in I, hindsight wait, yes. can I get those three tutties? If I can guarantee that garbage time performance from Easton Stick, I, I would do that. Uh, look, last week, it turned out better than you thought for Trevor Lawrence by the end of the game. He didn't look completely himself. He... His passes were off target a lot, and I don't know if that's just, you know, you don't have the base with the high ankle sprain that you're currently actively playing with. They threw the ball so much. He threw 50 times that he ended up okay. You know, uh, he, he wasn't great for fantasy, but he was okay. And against the Baltimore Ravens defense, despite what Matthew Stafford did with Trevor Lawrence's ankle, I'm scared of him and I'm scared of the deeper targets. Like Zay Jones, Calvin Ridley, I don't, you can start them. They could have a good game, but I'm not confident in those down-the-field players against the Ravens, whereas Evan Ingram near the line of scrimmage, I'm much more confident in. Monday Night Football is the 10-3 and Eagles against the 6-7 and Seattle Seahawks. 
DraftKings Sportsbook line, Philly minus three on the road. The over-under is 48 and a half. I don't see the stat here in our doc, but I believe the Eagles have lost like seven straight games to Seattle. Can you double check that? Kyle, do you know that offhand? I don't. I'll check. I believe that's what I saw. If you find it, let me know. So, you know, they're favored. They're coming off a, a difficult loss. The Seahawks defense over the last six weeks has been atrocious. Matchups for them have been tough. They're definitely in a uh, gauntlet stage. They played San Francisco two of those last three games, right? I mean that that's been uh, that's been a tough a tough ask of a young defense. Yeah, they played San Francisco in Week Twelve, San Francisco in Week Fourteen with oh Dallas in between, nice. and the Rams before. So now you get Philly to make it a nice five pack of brutal matchups, and you're going to probably lose this football game. Yeah, this will help. Yeah. yeah, Seattle's won seven straight and nine of ten against the Eagles beginning in 2005. Um, so that's wild. I, I, the last Eagles win is 2008 okay. against uh, the Seahawks. That's wild. They I, have not beat the Seahawks in 15 years. I think they're about to. Yeah, I, I would I would imagine they are. The, the problem is, is that like every time I think Seattle – is fully outmatched. I'm I'm generally impressed with Pete Carroll and their performance at home. Like even the Dallas game that got out of hand. It's like the Dallas game got out of hand and the um the San Francisco game did, but then they start strong and mm-hmm. like you know, people wanted to bench DK Metcalf. He's my start of the week. Like I think Metcalf is a lock. Yeah, the I, the I, wide receivers are I think are easy. All three of them. Yeah. Yes. Where it's difficult is Kenneth Walker. What do you do? As they're back, uh, Pete Carroll had said after the game, both weren't running backs made it out unscathed, uh, as in they didn't re-injure themselves. Walker, 56% of the snaps, it's, 13 it's, opportunities. He was dreadful on the ground. He, play and pray. He got he got it done through the air. Uh, I will give you you know just the personal anecdote for me. Against Brooks, I am playing Ty Chandler over Kenneth Walker. In uh, your I, playoff match, in my playoff I don't, matchup, I don't blame you for that. Um, let's go through some names. Uh, w- how and about James Conner? Would you rather play James Conner? Who gets- I'd probably play Conner because he's more isolated in that role. That's exactly how I feel. We'd play Zeke. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What about Gibson though? Antonio Gibson should Brian That's Robinson be tough. out? Like Antonio Gibson's a lot tougher for me in the um, like he's not going to do anything on the ground. So then it's like. You're betting on the passing game opportunities, which he should. I, I know Walker got. Oh my gosh, some he fumbled week. again last time. Ro- Gibson, yeah. Well, that's his favorite. <laughs> I know, but it's just like you know how it is with Antonio Gibson. Every yes. time you oh, think I, he's yeah. lined up for success, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I'd I would go. Kenneth I would go Kenneth Walker okay. there. The one guy that I think I would play over, and I, I believe I'm much higher on this player than you two, just based on not, not that you're low. Let's hear it. But I, I think I'm a little bit more bullish. Is Jarek McKinnon? Um, would is wow. that in consideration for you guys? Uh, no, not no, at all. I'd go Walker. Okay, I but, I think Jarek McKinnon has a big game. Um, well, he did last year at this time. That's for sure. It's it's tough. I mean, Geno Smith is a spot start if he's back, which he he could be. Yeah, it's really scary to play a player off the groin injury, you know, playing through injuries, but the matchup is perfect. I mean, if you're struggling for you know, like if Mahomes or Geno, that this matchup is perfect at home against the 32nd ranked Eagles who are going to score and don't have a secondary it's, that can stop you. It's Monday night though. So I know that's you, the problem. Like we might get news tomorrow that we're going to let Gino warm up on Monday, and then we'll make the call. I, I think yeah, Gino's no, going to play, it. but you have that risk. Jalen Hurts. And then you're playing Drew Locke. Yeah, you, you would have to have Drew Locke as your pivot. The question marks on the Philly side are Swift mm-hmm. and Goddard. The last three weeks for DeAndre Swift have been b- b- bad. Yes. Running back 27, 40, and 40. Kenneth Gainwell's snaps have gone up. He is not producing, but they have gone up. You don't get the opportunity to run the football if you're on the one ever for DeAndre Swift. And it, it's been a rough stretch. If you go back to week seven, you had a couple nice games and then mostly uh, a little bit underwhelming to bad. So where's your confidence level with Swift at this stage of the season? And, uh, you know, DeAndre Swift or James Conner for, for an example right there. 
I I think I'm going to go DeAndre Swift. It's so I mean the three weeks ago against Buffalo, he was 14 for 80. You didn't get the fantasy points you were hoping for, but he wasn't like he wasn't bad on the ground. Then he had to play San Francisco and Dallas, which the whole Eagles team struggled. They scored 19 points and then 13 points. So I I think that that's more of the reason of what happened to DeAndre Swift instead of him like turning into a pumpkin. So I'm still I would still be okay playing him. The Seattle matchup is really good for running backs. That's kind of why I lean towards him. It's like, but I, like Swift or Walker, same game. Yeah, I would go Swift play because Swift. of the matchup. But it is worth paying attention to. I mean, the you know the last three weeks he's been fifty two percent snaps. Before that, he was at sixty one percent of snaps. He was getting forty six percent of rushing back carries. Now he's getting forty two percent rushing back. Running back. <laughs> running back. <laughs> rushing no, no, I like carries. I like that rushing back carries. He was getting twelve percent <laughs> of the targets from the backfield. Now he's getting seven percent over the stretch. So. The over the was, last how far? Over those last three weeks. Yeah, I think that was. I think that's the game script. Like when if they're losing and and trying to catch up, then they're going to go to gain well. It is. Uh, yeah, that's very true. And this game, I mean, it's um, that's a tight line. Yeah, I, 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 I was you surprised know what? that what? Oh, baby, Andy's almost upset of the week. No, I, I've. I've got the confidence. Wow, they need to win this game. Pete Carroll wins the must win unbelievable well their mind is blown their next three matchups plus the eagles only have a rushing back they don't have any running backs <laughs> um that is the desired necessary reaction <laughs> from jason every, to get this right every time that you blow my mind and i think you're crazy nullified if it's no gino you win every time. nullify i'm, I'm okay. vetoing the that, almost upset without I'll gino. allow it without gino um it's funny this is the time of year in playoffs where you're like you're making these start-sit decisions, but half of it could be made like this, Mike. Um, your opponent, they're starting a, a, a running back, and who are you more afraid to face, Kenneth Walker or DeAndre Swift? Yes, think about it like that. Swift. Yeah, I'd be more afraid to play Swift, too. Yeah. So, all right, it is time. Fantasy Face-Off, presented by DraftKings. Well, 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 Mike. Uh, you must have been pretty, uh, you. <laughs> pretty happy to be done with your streak. Yeah, I don't know that the Quattro's ever been done. I no, don't, I don't, I think, don't so. think so. I don't think so. So uh, we'll I have to do something real special. <laughs> cool. Yeah, um, I lost, so I get to spin the wheel. Wheel of shame. All right, spin the wheel. I thought I'd never spin it again. I thought it was yeah, over. That's really? what we all think. And uh, Sharknado. Pizza face. Pizza face. Dobby Lobby? Is that what it says? Yeah, yeah it is what Dobby it says. Lobby. Dobby what is Lobby. Dobby Lobby? It's, oh. it's, it's Dobby. <laughs> oh, it's nerd You're, stuff. It's nerd stuff. <laughs> it's Harry Potter's I mean, Dobby. What's that? There he is. <laughs> Wait, that's it? That's it. He's that's a, it? He's a house elf today. It doesn't even fit. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you something right now. I can see nothing. I, I've never been. I've never had to see zero. I think there's slits under the eyes that you can. Oh, oh I see him peeking out now. Yeah, there he is. But I want a Dobby, Dobby. voice. Dobby, uh, I don't. Uh, what does Dobby's voice sound like? Give me an example. Yeah, d yeah, Give me nerd. The no, I'm not. No, what does it sound like? Uh, Andy's Harry about to tell Potter. us. <laughs> there you go. Whatever you think it is, it is. All right. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can yeah. hear you. I can barely breathe. <laughs> barely. <laughs> The All ears right. are great. Uh, my quarterback, Matthew Stafford, 6,000. Yep. Jay? My quarterback, Matthew Stafford, 6,000. I figured everyone was going Stafford, so I pivoted. Really? I am going Jordan Love at 6,200. Wow. More expensive. Yeah. He was uh, in my lineup first this week. I just – I. Uh, I felt very strong you guys would go that way, so I was trying to keep Kobe. I was trying to get some uh, some difference there. Okay. All right. And you did. Running backs, Kyron Williams, seventy five hundred. Yeah. I figured you'd have him. Bijan Robinson, sixty eight hundred. Okay. I made a second lineup this morning and those were the two running backs, but that is not the one I'm going with today. I'm going with one I made Tuesday morning, which is what you always want to do. A Tuesday lineup? A Tuesday early morning lineup. <laughs> um, how's the <laughs> how's the Oh, that's freaky looking. <laughs> Um, uh, All so, right. so my, got? I've got Jarek McKinnon, <laughs> I've got Jarek McKinnon at 5,100. Uh, wow. I shared, I, I think he has a decent game. 
I um, should have known. And Christian McCaffrey at 9,300 uh, against the Arizona Cardinals. Well, shoot. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey and Kyron Williams. Ooh, that's a we monster. Are, we are putting all the chips on the running backs. I, mean, I thought about that lineup to start the week. It was just took too much away from everything else. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll I, find out. I guess we'll find out what it took away. My wide receivers, Puka Nakua, okay. 7,300. Yep. Shows him over Cooper Cup. Washington gives up deep balls. Puka, I think, is going to be a big benefit. And Puka's a, a bit cheaper than Cooper Cup. Yeah. yeah he is. What? Yeah, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, Puka is that. Yeah, he is. Um, He's a, a yeah, little... I, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Did I not say cheaper? No, you said, uh, you uh, said you that. Said cheaper. It's you just, said, you said that. the word. You said, you said bit word. before, and, oh. it, and it came across. Ah, uh, little, little bit. <laughs> yeah, little. Little bit. He's little, a little bit cheaper. A little <laughs> bit cheaper. I see. Uh, I see there could be a run on words there. Yes. It was very Ooh, good because yes, that's was. all I heard. <laughs> Puka Nakua 7,300. Drake uh, London. What? Wow. 5,400. He's the best at that price to me for a PPR value. A week too late. <laughs> and. <laughs> yeah. Traylon Burks for three thousand. What? He's three thousand. The okay. matchup with Houston's great. Jason's start of the week is DeAndre Hopkins. There's not a lot of good three thousand options. I went with him over the Toure Malik Heath three thousand okay. options. All right. Mm, interesting. It is over a thousand degrees inside of this. <laughs> um, okay, so I have. Um, I I actually didn't stack with Cooper Cup or or oh, a little bit right and dirty cheap uh, Puka Nakua. Um, <laughs> I went with C.D. Lamb. Uh, I wanted him in my lineup because if I can get Christian McCaffrey and C.D. Uh, Lamb Let's lately, go weather. Yeah, you're hoping for bad weather. I've also got my start of the week, DeAndre Hopkins at 6,200, and Jaden Reed at 4,900, which I assume, Mike, you have to have if you've got – Of course. Uh, I, had, I have Jaden Reed at 4,900. I also have Puka Nakua at 7,300. Okay. And then I have Rasheed Rice against the Patriots at 6,100. Well, I – was able to save some money along the way, so I, I like my final three options here. No, I don't like mine. My tight – yeah, well, Christian McCaffrey says what? Um, David Njoku is my tight end at 4,700. My flex, discount CMC Rashad White Oh, at 7,000. 7,000, okay. And my uh, – which is more expensive than Bijan this week. And then my defense is what I thought the uh, – it's New England. It's 2,300 New England. <laughs> Okay, I don't love it. I don't Chiefs. love it. Yeah. Um, I have for my final three. <laughs> I'm gonna expire. <clears throat> I have I've never been this hot. I've got Tucker Craft sitting down at three thousand. Um, uh, Green Bay Packers yep. rookie tight end. I have a stack with Stafford of Demarcus Robinson. All right, sitting down at thirty six hundred. And I have the Jets defense. Uh, going to Miami at twenty five hundred. Well, we have That's a lot a of overlap. Mess. What's that? That's a Scary one. The Jets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Jets it, defense going to Miami? Yep. It, yeah. Well, it, I have the Jets defense as well, just in case there's a hobble Tyreek. So our defenses are facing the Chiefs and the Dolphins. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, just that's, like you that's want. pretty good. I, I went with the Super Stack, so I have Tucker Craft at 3,000. It's kind of backed into it with uh, my finances. And then my flex, Lynn Bowden Jr. at 3,100 with oh. the chance that Chris Olave misses and <laughs> – that also, is. with no cash left over. That was uh, Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code BALLERS to get $150 in bonus bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I will, I, will, I will pay you both $100 if I don't win this week in Fantasy Faceoff. Okay. I really? Feel, after going through this, I feel 100% confident my lineup will win. Okay. okay. All right. Great. So I accept open, that yeah. one way deal. It's not a bet. It's just literally I'm offering you each $100 if you can beat me this week. Oh, that's great. Because if you add your victories with Mike's victories together this year, they don't they don't equal mine yet. So I, I, this I'll week take is more what money. I'm, this week is what I'm I'm betting on. All so. right. So I will real quick. Uh, the final note here: Dolphins coach Mike McDaniel. Uh, Tyreek Hill will be pregame, not practicing all week. They'll the, decide pregame. And the quote is, uh, "It's he's con this is about it, could he play. It's he's confident. And then I have the support of the medical guys that he can go be himself. So pregame. That's like a problem. Game time decision. Go Jets defense. <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs>
What is this other quote that Brooks, you shared this in upcoming about, uh, is that from him as well? Yeah. Both from this morning. looks like, does it? So you guys, I can't talk. What do we, what do we got Brooks? Summarize it for us. I was just saying in theory, he would have been able to practice if he didn't have the standard that he has. They're just, oh, they're just okay. working on getting him as healthy as possible. Okay. Perfect. Well, maybe he plays. All right. Hit the outro. Andy. That's going to do it for the week. Everyone. Thank you for joining the podcast. Good luck this weekend. Sunday Live, check it out. Until then, goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.